This Ridley-O is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. And this past year, it was actually in Athens, Greece. So, As a board member, how far do you think the libraries should go in restricting uh, film? You're a board member, correct? Okay, okay. It's, it's interesting. I do have another question. If somebody like me, uh, two weeks from now or two years from now, wants to do exactly what I'm doing and doesn't want to get permission, and they're easier to bully, are they going to be made to stop their camera? So this is the policy and procedure of the district. So, and you're not the only individual. We have individuals that are First Amendment auditors, which I assume is what you are as well, come into our facilities quite often um, across the entire district, across all of El Paso County. So when they come into our facilities, the intent is that everyone is treated exactly the same. The policy and procedure is the same across the entire district. So, so are you ejecting the auditors? No. no. Uh, again, we, we haven't done that. We haven't done that with you, and that's that's our policy and procedure going forward. Again, as long as those who come into the library respect the personal privacy of patrons that are here, um, because they have that personal right of having that privacy of what they are looking at and what they are doing, it's very important to the library district to protect those privacy rights individuals that use our facilities we are certainly welcome to film anything inside our facilities. But the uh, the policy is not really written that way. When I read the policy, I viewed it as potentially banning me from filming even outside a civic event uh, unless I got permission. Now, I came here expecting maybe to be arrested. <coughs> certainly were arrested today, and I hope that we've been as accommodating as we certainly can to you. I'm, I'm confused if you could speak more to what your specific concern is about you said you came here expecting to be arrested. And yeah, there's a possibility. What is it that your concern is, speaking a little bit more specifically? The way your policy is written makes it sound like uh, you can't film in the libraries without permission. Now, maybe that's changed recently, but... No, uh, I mean, are, did they provide you the policy? Because they certainly provided I just read it online about okay. two, two months ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, the procedure, if you are coming here from... Um, uh, like a news agency, or if you're coming here to film um, some sort of video for profit, or something like that, like you're filming a movie, or um, maybe, another, maybe a commercial, mm -hmm. something like that, you have to um, work through the communications department to do that, um, and they give that permission constantly. People come to our facilities across the entire region. I would hesitate to say weekly, but at least monthly, um, and to receive those media requests. Yep. Um, and that's, that's worked in there. Anyone who is a private individual who's coming to the facilities, there's a specific section in there for a private, uh, on my head I believe it says photographers or private videographers. You can't quote me on the language, I can certainly go get it. We can go through it line by line if you'd like to. So it's but those are allowed to come just as we've explained to you today. Anyone can come to our facilities. The outside of our facilities is public property. The inside of our facilities is public libraries. The only thing that we protect is the privacy of the patrons who are using our facilities to use so in a, an environment where they which are... I'm, which I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> I to assist you, where they are protected for their uh, but, uh, rights of what they are viewing within the library. Uh, but yeah, but then that's definitely not how it has played out for me these two times that I've been here. The first time I was successfully ejected, and the second time... Uh, you stated that was two or three years ago? Uh, that was in 2016. Okay. And then uh, th this time... Uh, you know, you guys came close to ejecting me. I mean, it was a, it was a, you know, it was, it was quite a long conflict, you know, before it was resolved, you know, and I appreciate yeah, you resolving it. But again, that's what happens when you're not- across the country, and that's why you're yeah. a First Amendment auditor. We strive to inform our employees, to train our employees, to educate our employees about what the proper procedures are, what your rights are, what everyone's rights are, what the patrons' rights are, and I think that's sometimes where confusion comes in a process because 
Libraries are built specifically around protecting the rights of the patrons, protecting the rights of those who are seeking information to have that privacy. And it's a confusing environment. And First Amendment authors like yourself are out there doing that work. And that is confusing going forward. Again, you said three years ago you were rejected. I wasn't here. I can't speak to that. I don't know what the circumstances were about that. Today you weren't. We are working every day just as you are working every day to make sure everyone's rights are protected. That is why libraries are here, to protect people's rights. And the fact that you're challenging that is great. We didn't object to you. I hope that we've been amenable to everything you talked about. I hope it's understood. But again, libraries are so built around personal privacy rights and protecting the rights of those that are inside that sometimes that's confusing. Yeah. And we have worked diligently to make sure that our staff understands, that our patrons understand that they have those rights, and that sometimes there's confusion on that and it's a work in progress. It always will be. Nobody can be perfect. We do everything we possibly can. Well, I would urge you to take, it's going to take some weeks for these videos to, to to spill out on my channel, but I would urge you to watch how everyone handled me and maybe urge them to be a little more accommodating of photographers who just want to film a civic event. We continually, yeah. all year long, we do educational, again, we're 17 facilities all year long, we're constantly doing educational programs, teaching people how to interact, what the rules are, how they're enforced, how they're continually evolving throughout. So we, we train all year long and we continue to do that all year long. So we will continue to do that and hopefully going forward you won't have any more issues. Okay, Mr. Branthier, I appreciate your time, even if I did have to look at it, <laughs> the name. But thank you again, and I will talk to you when I talk to you. Thank you. All right, take care. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite too at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to lrn.fm. Feds don't want you to hear them.